pretending to be godly, pretending to be priests, pretending to be righteous, and yet the Bible tells us that they are evil, bloodthirsty, workers of iniquity. So what's the moral of the sermon? What do we take home from this? Well, first of all, number one, we need to not be naive about the world that we live in. Some people, they don't even think that the workers of iniquity even exist. They think, oh, it's good in everybody. Most people are basically good. Some people are just all mixed up. No, no, no. The workers of iniquity. Prove that not true. Okay, number one. So don't be naive is number one where we are for that. Okay, number two, the Bible said over and over again, avoid the workers of iniquity. Avoid them. Stay away from them. Don't go in the way with them. Don't go in company with them. Don't fellowship with them. Stay away from the workers of iniquity. Once somebody's been identified as a worker of iniquity, stay away from that person. Okay, and number three thing that I want you to take away from the sermon is that if you're not truly saved, and what I mean by truly saved is that all of your faith is in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Unless your faith is 100% in the finished work of Christ, meaning you're trusting his death, burial, and resurrection to get you to heaven. You're trusting his blood to get you to heaven. Not in your own deeds and your own work, your own preaching and, and, and exploits. If your faith is not 100% in Jesus for salvation, if you're not saved, if you don't have all of your trust in the finished work of Christ on Calvary, but yet you're coming to church, you're going through the motion, you're getting more of a, you know, you run the risk of becoming a worker of iniquity. Now, I to the wicked and 